In this video, I'll remove shadows and wrinkles from eyes using Affinity Photo and Frequency Separation. I hope you enjoy this video or find it useful. If you do, then please like and subscribe. Okay, so we're going to use Frequency Separation, which is my favourite method, to remove shadows and lines from these eyes. There are other methods you could use, but I think that using frequency separation just gives you much, much more control. Okay, let's get started. We have to create our frequency separation layers. But first, press Ctrl and J to duplicate the background so we have it for mixing later and also for reference. Next, with our new layer selected, go to Filters and Frequency Separation. I'd like a better view of what I'm doing, so control and mouse wheel to zoom in. Now here we are looking at the eye area. And to do the separation, all we need to do is use the radius slider to remove the lines and detail on the right panel and preserve the detail in the left panel without introducing too much color on the left. So as we increase the radius, you'll see the lines disappear in the right panel and more lines and detail appear in the left panel. Now if you go too far with the radius, you start to introduce actual colour into the left side, which is what you don't want, you just want detail. The trick is to get the balance right. I think for this image, around 10 will be fine. We've isolated the lines and detail in the left panel and we're left with the colour on the right, the lines have been extracted. OK, that looks fine to me, so we'll just hit apply. And we will be left with our low frequency and high frequency layers. The low frequency is our colour layer, which was the right panel in the frequency separation filter. And the high frequency is the detail layer, or the left panel in our filter. If we turn it off, we can see underneath we have our colour layer. Now I'll just use control and click to select both of the layers, the high and low frequency layers, then right click and group. Then I'll just call the group FS. Grouping these will make it easier for comparison and mixing later on. Let's open up the group. First we'll work on our low frequency layer to get rid of the shadows. Control zero to fit the image to the screen. And first we're going to get rid of all of the shadows around the eyes, but leave the detail, the lines. We will tackle the lines in a separate pass. The tool I like to use for this job is the patch tool. If your patch tool isn't shown in the list already, it will be here in the drop down with the other tools such as the in painting. Okay, select the patch tool, making sure we're on our low frequency layer. We create a selection around the dark area that we'd like to fix. Once you've made your selection, just let go of the mouse and then move to a piece of skin that you think might fit. You'll have to search for one, but you do get used to this. Then click on that piece of skin to place it, to replace it, and then click again just to get rid of the selection. Okay, then let's zoom out and take a look. Then we just turn off our frequency separation group to reveal the original image. And hey presto, you can see already we've removed that dark area. Turn the group back on and we'll remove a few more little patches like these to clean up the shadows in the left eye. I'm just circling, patching these little areas and then just finding pieces of skin on the forehead and other areas to fit. Get the corner of the eye here done. And we don't have to worry about interfering with the eyelashes because they are on the high frequency layer. I think I'll attempt to grab one huge patch here, then skin color from the forehead again, that looks fine. Remove some darkness from the corner of the eye again. And again, we're not going to interfere with the lines or the lashes because they're on the high frequency layer. Let's take a look at our work so far. Control zero to zoom out and center. Turn off the group. And as you can see, just with the low frequency layer, we've got rid of the dark patches around the eyes. 
but we still have all the lines and detail. Excellent. OK, so the next stage in our eye touch up is to look at removing the lines. And to remove these, we will use the high frequency layer. Select high frequency and we'll use the patch tool again. So just make sure you still have your patch tool active. I'll attempt to do this area in one go. So we'll go around the crow's feet, avoiding the eyelashes, around the wrinkles like so. And then I'll replace that with a bit of skin from the forehead. That doesn't look too bad, though I do think the skin here looks a little unnatural. I'll create another little patch there and then just grab some skin from nearby. You're always trying to find skin that looks like it fits, so sometimes skin nearby is better. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. With a few patches, we've got rid of the lines and replaced them with what I think looks like quite natural skin. Okay, so this little patch here is standing out, so I'm just going to replace it with something better. Okay, I think we're ready to move on to the other eye. And for demonstration purposes, I'll do this eye with a few smaller patches rather than with one large one. Again, just create your patch, find some skin, create patch, and find some skin. And then the crow's feet at the side. Now it's quite smooth skin here, so I'll grab it from really nearby. That fits nicely. There we go, that didn't take long. With a few more patches, we got rid of the wrinkles from around the eyes. I think I'll just have another shot at this little area. It's bugging me a bit. Okay, that's not too bad. I think I'll leave it at that. I think we've done a pretty good job. We've got rid of the dark circles and lines around the eyes. I think we should have a look. Just turn off our frequency separation group. Before and after. Before and after. Now you may think, looking at it, that your work is slightly overdone. But don't worry, if you think you've overdone it, all you have to do is click on the group and at the opacity, select the little arrow and bring down the slider. Here we can control how much our group is mixed into the base image and so reduce the effect. And after a little play with the slider, I think I'll settle on around 75. And now a quick look at before and after. Not a bad job. Using the opacity slider of the group, we've reduced the impact and so made it look quite a bit more natural. And while I'm here, I may as well just fix a couple of little things I've seen, like this little wrinkle here. I'll bring back up the opacity on the group, select my high frequency, then zoom back in and lasso this little wrinkle here. Then I'll just replace that little patch with some skin nearby, just to make it look right. Also, I'm not keen on this little rough patch here. So let's do something about that. And there we go, select the patch, then replace it with a little bit of skin nearby, the soft skin by the cheek there. And lastly, I think I'll just attack this little patch of what looks like dry skin here. It's standing out and replace it with something, I think, there. And now we have a little patch of color that's different here. So we'll go to the low frequency and with a few select patches, blend that area together a little better, just so it doesn't stand out so much. Okay, that's much better, not perfect, but for the sake of this tutorial, I haven't got all day. I think that looks pretty good. Let's take a look, off and on. We've not only cleaned up the eyes, but we've cleaned up a couple of extra little bits along the way. Again, I don't want the effect to be too overdone, so I'll go to the group opacity and set it to 75, 75%. Let's take a look, one final comparison, before and after. I think we've done a pretty good job of removing shadows and lines from the eyes using affinity photo and frequency separation. While we're here, let's look at one more example. This is a nice image, only a few lines and a little shadow. 
So let's zoom in and then Control plus J to create a new layer, duplicate our layer. Then filters and frequency separation. Let's get into the eye so that we can set the radius properly. Remember we want to just blur out the lines, the wrinkles, and leave the skin with no wrinkles at all. 8.6 on the radius seems fine. Then select both layers using control, then right click and group. Name it FS for frequency separation. Open the group and select the low frequency layer. Make sure the patch tool is selected. First of all, I'll get rid of this great big patch of dark color under the eyes here. Find a nice area of skin to replace it with. There we go. Then the same with the other eye, avoiding the leaf. Fine. Now that's not too bad, but we are getting a slight panda eye effect. There's a little bit of darkening under the eyes still. So first of all, I'm just going to use a couple more patches just to blend the edges more naturally into the rest of the skin. And now I'm going to actually paint in some color into the low frequency to lighten them up a bit. Just select my paintbrush and with a low opacity of maybe 10, a hardness of zero and make sure the blend mode is on normal. I'm going to press Alt and click on the skin to sample the color that I'd like to paint. Then I'm going to do just a couple of sweeps over the dark area, like so. And then the same with the other eye, I'll sample the skin here again. And again, just a couple of sweeps just to lighten it slightly or blend it in with the surrounding skin. Just to try and make it a little more even, not going too mad. And there we go. We've reduced the darkness and got rid of the panda effect. Okay, let's take a look at what we've done so far. Let's turn off the group. Turn it on. Turn it off. Turn it on. And I think we've done a pretty good job of getting rid of the shadows. Now let's do something about the lines. Select our high frequency layer, then back to the patch tool. And I'll quickly select as best I can around the wrinkles whilst at the same time trying to avoid the eyelashes. I don't want to be deleting them. Okay, just finishing off the patch and then replace it with skin from the cheek here. I think that should look pretty good. That's not bad. And the same again dodging the eyelashes and grab skin from the cheek. Now looking at it, I can see there seems to be a little bit of a seam here at the top of the cheek. So just one more little patch to blend it in. There we go, nice. And also one little patch just here and done fine. Then just tidy these couple of little lines here. Obviously you could do a better job with more time. Okay, I think that looks fine for now. That's not too bad. We'll look at before and after. We've completely got rid of the shadows and got rid of the wrinkles. As usual, I prefer a more natural look, so I'll select the group and then reduce the opacity. And I think around there. Yeah, just over 50% looks nice. Okay, let's hide the group to take another look. I think we can push the opacity up just a bit more. I think that will be fine. Let's just check again. Okay, there we go. I think what we've achieved here is a pretty natural removal of shadows and wrinkles using Affinity Photo and frequency separation. Excellent. Mm -hmm.